our praise is, is, is an outpouring of our prayers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If your praise is weak, your prayer life is probably weak. If we talk about spirit and truth. What did they do to Jesus? They flogged him and handed him over to be crucified. They whipped the Son of God. They whipped Jesus, God in the flesh. Here's the reality. The fact that Jesus kept his mouth shut, the fact that Jesus took the punishment of being flogged, the fact that Jesus went from courtroom to courtroom, the fact that Jesus allowed them to put a crown of thorns on his head, nails in his hands, spear in his side, nails in his feet, the fact that they, Jesus allowed them to do that demonstrates his love for all humanity. I said, should I go in there? What he was saying was, should I, a lay person, a non-priest, go up in that spot that the Bible tells me not to go into? Nehemiah knew that no true prophet would ask someone to violate God's law. Nehemiah knew that if he went up in there not being a priest, he could desecrate the temple and bring God's judgment on to himself. What does that mean? It means that you laugh, it means that you labor, it means that you cry with this body of believers to get this to this place. And so if you hear one thing, remember one thing about this message, I hope you know how important you are to God. Know that our church uh, is not a building, but a body, right? And, and that you never see it as these walls, right? But our worship that make us who we are. Amen? Good morning, GCC. I don't know about you, but if you listen to that verse, it says the king is exalted on high. Let me be clear, it doesn't, it shouldn't take me to come up here and remind you of why you should be exalted. You've been through some things this week. You've been through some things in your life, but you know what? Some of us shouldn't even be here today because of the, some of the decisions that we've made in our past. But we are here to exalt him on high. And you know what that means? That means we should be giving him praise because he sits on high. He cannot be removed. And even if you don't praise him, he still sits there. He is still in control. He is still has all the power in his hands. So I don't know about you today, but the Lord should be exalted on high. That verse says forever and ever, which means he cannot be moved. He does not lose his place. He does not lose his power. He lives there forever and ever. So no matter what we do, he still is Lord. He is still God all by himself. Praise his name this morning because he is exalted and he sits on high. Praise him this morning. I don't know if you've been through some things, but if you just think back to yesterday, if you think back to last week, if you think back to last year, and you start recognizing that God has brought you through some things that He probably, that you probably shouldn't have been brought through, you should give Him some praise this morning. You should give Him some praise this morning. You should give Him some praise this morning. Because He is God. God all by himself. He holds all power in his hands. He laid down his life for you so that you can have the opportunity to rise up again one day. Hallelujah. 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 He is exalted. He is on high. He sees all that you're going through. He recognizes all of your situations. He's there when you don't even think he's there. It's us that's not paying attention. All he wants you to do is exalt him. All he wants you to do is exalt him. And he can turn your situation around. Just give him praise. Give him praise. Oh, and say when the blessings, when praises go up, the blessings come down. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. I don't know about you today, but I can use some blessings. I can use some blessings. 
I've been through the roots of things. I've seen some things this week that I didn't want to see. So all I know to do is praise, because I don't have any other words. I don't know what else to do. I don't know what else to say, but all I can say is, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Dear Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for being in control. I thank you for being the Lord of this world. Even though everybody doesn't recognize it, you still are. You still are. I pray right now, dear Lord, that as we enter your presence, that we do it humbly, with open hearts and open minds and open ears, dear Lord. I pray that we hear a word from you today, dear Lord. I pray that we hear a life-changing word today. I pray that we don't leave here the same way we came in today, dear Lord. Allow us to be willing servants of your word. I just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before you jump to a conclusion, thinking somebody looked mean or somebody half spoke, remember, just like when you're going through, sometimes others are just going through. Yeah. Don't talk about them, don't criticize them, just pray for them. Yeah. We all need some prayer. Yeah. We all need a, a hand and a touch from our God yeah. to remind us. That he still got it. Yeah. Yeah. Remind us that he's still in control. Yeah. Despite of whatever we might be going through, he still got it. Yeah. All right? Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord God, for this new mercy you allow us to see. Lord, we ask that your word would just fall afresh today. Use me, O oh Lord, as your mouthpiece, as an extension of your, your grace, Lord God. Anything that is in me that would hinder your word from going forth with the clarity, with the boldness, with the spirit for which you intend. I pray that you hide it, restrain it, Lord God, so that your word can go forth and you can be glorified. Your people can be edified. The enemy can be horrified. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. This morning... We are back in the book of Matthew, walking through the Sermon on the Mount. This morning, specifically, find ourselves in chapter 5. We'll be looking at verses 17 uh, to 20. Looking at how Jesus fulfills the law. And as we get back into this, this sermon, uh, Jesus kind of takes this break for uh, station identification kind of thing. To, to communicate that he is, what he is teaching and what he is communicating, um, it, it, it is something that is, is not going against the Old Testament. You know, he's giving them the Beatitudes. He's challenging them to be the, the salt of the, of the earth and the light of the, the world. Uh, and he's highlighting the spiritual heart that was meant to be developed from the law, right? And so he starts off by saying, don't think 
that I came to abolish the law or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or one stroke of a letter will pass away from the law until all things are accomplished. And so, so Jesus clearly is communicating that I'm not here to abolish the law and the prophets, which is the way they refer to the Old Testament, right? And so the promises, the prophecies, the hopes, the, the expectations, all of that was written is, is not only true, right? And, and, and all the word that you have, have reverenced uh, is, is being fulfilled in Jesus' life. And so Jesus is telling them as the incarnate word of God that this is what word becoming flesh actually looks like. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And, and so, so Jesus has to explain, right, the, the difference between his teaching, or, or I won't say the difference, the relationship between his teaching, if you will, and the Old Testament scriptures. Because some of us ignore the Old Testament. It, it was amazing. I know when I when I got saved and I seen people handing out just the New Testament. I'm like, why are you giving out half a Bible? <laughs> you know, when, when I got saved, I said, where should I start? My man said, start at Genesis. <laughs> Open the book. And, and, and so I started at Genesis. So then when I seen people giving out New Testaments, I was like, why, why would you give somebody half of a Bible, right? And, 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 and so some think that Jesus came to get rid of the Old Testament because they see the Old Testament as just that old. Remember, we named it Old Testament, not, not, not the Lord. All right? so, so we see it as Old Testament as opposed to the first half, right? And, 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 and some think that Jesus came and he was a, against the Old Testament. They accused him of, of blasphemy. Right? Because of the way he spoke, he spoke with such authority. Right? And then he said that he had the nerve to say the scriptures were fulfilled in him. And the truth is, if he wasn't God, then he would be blasphemous. Right? You know, but John records in 7 and 46, he says, no man ever spoke like Jesus. Right? But Jesus, if, if he did not believe the, the Old Testament, he would not say, not only did he not come to abolish the law, he said, but not the smallest uh, a, a letter or, or stroke of a letter, also known, I used to have one of King James, so we call it the jot and tittle. Not, not the jot nor a tittle will pass away before it was fulfilled. Amen? Amen. And, and so how we view the Bible is important. How we view it, if we discount half this book, that's, that's an issue, right? Because some of us look at it, and, and I've had a conversation recently, amen. Some of us look at the Old Testament as being irrelevant, right? And, and therefore, they walk through the Old Testament kind of picking and choosing, right, what they want to believe. I'm, I'm a, to do that means you're a heretic. That's the wrong approach to, to the word of God, right? Because he clearly says, I came to fulfill it. I didn't come to abolish it and not the smallest letter, the smallest stroke. He said, not the dot over the I or the cross of the T should be removed. So, so, so what do we do with that, right? What, how, do we, how do we handle that? You want to know why so many churches and cults for that matter read the word of God wrong? Hmm? And, and, or, or, it's that, what we call uh, the hermeneutic, or, or, or the key that they use to interpret the Bible, right? How do I, how do I read that, right? And so don't be scared of hermeneutic. Hermeneutic simply refers to the interpretative measure that you use, okay? And, and so how they approach that, how we approach uh, our understanding of the Old Testament, right, is, is important. So if you try to read the Old Testament apart from Jesus, you'll never find your way to Christ, right? And, and if you say, I'm a New Testament, I heard people, I'm a New Testament church. So if you only read the New Testament and you ignore the Old Testament, you only got half a picture, right? And, and if you don't accept who Jesus said he is, then you're totally wrong. You won't get any of it, all right? Jesus says at the beginning of, of, of his earthly ministry, right? And he also comes back to remind his disciples on a man's road in Luke 24. He told them, how foolish are you, right? How, how slow to believe all the prophets had spoken. He said, did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and enter his glory? And then the Bible tells us, beginning with Moses and, and throughout all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in the scriptures and how it pointed to him. 
So he introduced what we would refer to in, in seminary as, as a Christocentric hermeneutic, which means in light of his coming, we go back and we read the Old Testament differently because now we're understanding all of these things that's pointing towards him. Am I making sense? Yeah. Amen. It's like when, if, how many of you seen the movie The Sixth Sense? All right. If you didn't, spoiler alert. All right. You watch the movie The Sixth Sense. You get to the end of the movie and you find out that Bruce Willis is dead. You're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> However, the next time you watch the movie, knowing that Bruce Willis is dead, you see the movie totally different than you seen it the first time. Now you're noticing, you're realizing all of these things that was pointing to him being dead when you never knew. Let me tell you, my Lord is alive. And when you go back and you look at the Old Testament, in light of the coming of the cross, it reads totally different. And so Jesus is establishing who he is. And so our, our mission is not to eliminate the Old Testament or even eliminate parts of the Old Testament. Our job is to seek to understand how does Jesus fulfill them Amen. in him. Amen? Amen. And so uh, if, if we look at that, if we, if we can understand this fulfilling, how do we comprehend uh, and, and understand this word fulfilling? Right? And, and, and because he said he came to fulfill it means that the scriptures that we're reading find their intended purpose, meaning, and completion in him. Right? So he fulfilled the law. How did he fulfill the law? Because he obeyed it perfectly. He was tempted in every way that we were, yet he sinned not. He fulfilled the, the prophet's Prophesying how through his life, his death, and his resurrection, the Bible tells us that he is the seed of the woman, right? He is the son of David. He is the priest in the order of Melchizedek. He was the perfect sacrifice without spot nor blemish. So, so he gives this, this bigger, clearer, more complete picture, right, of what we have been getting bits and pieces from, from the, from the prophets. And so he's ushering in the kingdom of God. Amen? Now, there are things in the Old Testament I struggle with. Amen? Have, have you read the Old Testament? I don't know if you can read the Old Testament and not struggle. Well, it's not just the names. I'm talking about there's some stuff in there. Right? That, that, that I, I'm a, there's some stuff I don't like. There's some stuff I don't agree with personally. Right? But I'm humble enough to know that I can't even dream about fully comprehending the mind of my God, right? And he comes and he declares their validity, right? And it's just like when Paul was at when I said, when he said, who has known the mind of the Lord and who has instructed him? So yeah, I, it don't all make sense to me. I don't all agree with it, but man, if I'm going to walk around and think that I know better than God, I was having a conversation I'm not going to call out with who. And uh, someone asked me, they said, well, what do we do with passages? Like when the Bible says you need to stone somebody. Yeah. <laughs> somebody said, hand me a rock. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with passages that say we're supposed to stone somebody when, when they sin? And, I, and, and, and I'm, I'm explaining that you got to recognize, right? that this was the capital punishment. This is the way they did it in that day. The people were there to, to judge the sin and carry, carry out this stoning, right? But, but if you find your fulfillment in Jesus, we understand that he paid the price for sin. Amen. And we who Amen. confess our sin, he declare us innocent of that sin and the guilty don't go unpunished. Yeah. We're just not the authorities no more. We're not the ones who carry out the sentence anymore. They don't go unpunished, right? They be judged. They're judged by God. Their punishment is not by stoning as a physical death, but as eternal damnation yes. Amen. Amen. of a spiritual death. Amen? Amen? And so we got to recognize that there's some tough passages, but we can't be lazy and discount them or throw them away or say, oh, that don't mean nothing. We got to figure out how, because Jesus said it. They find their fulfillment in him. We got to figure out how 
does it find its fulfillment in him? Why don't we sacrifice animals anymore? They sacrificed animals repeatedly. Well, here's one clue, because Jesus went to the cross to sacrifice once and for all, past, present, and future sin, right? What about the clothes? What about the jewelry? What about, what about all those things that they wore? And Jesus came and said, what? It's not the stuff on the outside, but the stuff on the inside. It, it, it's not what goes, the dietary regulations inside your body, but what comes out of your body, because out of the heart, the mouth speaks, and so understanding, it's not done away with, it's not obsolete, it's like, we well, no, ignore that, we look and connect the dots, how does it find its fulfillment in Jesus, none of it is obsolete, amen, amen. that's Jesus challenges, it teaches, first he challenges those who learn, then he comes back by verse 19 and challenges the teachers, say, therefore, Whoever breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and, and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Right? And, and so now he's talking about the teachers and what they teach and how they teach is an issue. And the judgment for their teaching is also an issue. This is why James said in chapter 3, not many of us should presume to be teachers. He said, because do know that you will be judged more strictly. Right? It might look easy to get up here. I don't know. You know, I, I, I wrestle. I, this is not easy for me at all. Let, let, let me be clear. I struggle every week. Can I be honest with you? Every week. I wrestle with the script. This, this message is not done until I preach it. Let me say it. There's never a done point. Kim, I asked, did you, you finish the word? I'm like, no, you know, the no. word don't get finished. Word ain't finished till it's said. So, so every day I'm working on it. Every night I'm working on it. And every Sunday I get up, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, and pray and go back and work on it some more. I done printed it, I done scratched it, I done did a whole bunch of things. Why? Because there's something very serious about getting up and handling the Word of God, right? And, 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 and it's not just the, the, the prep work. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the magnitude of the moment of handling God's Word, speaking on behalf of God. That's a scary thing to do. Let, let me tell you. And, and well, it's, let me be clear. It's scary for those of us who reverence the Lord. Because some get up, they love it. I, I get up with fear and trepidation. I, I sweat. Some get up, and I ain't come out sweating by, by a shout. I don't come out sweating because it's fear and trepidation as you're trying to communicate this word. Some get up, and they can do it with ease because they preach an agenda that's all their own. When you leave, they want you to talk about how good they did. They, they want you to be reminded everything is done to, to, to woe you, to show you, to, to make you glorify them versus God. And so if you get up there on your, your own behalf, you don't have the same fear. Oh, I'll do it. Give me a shot. Give me <laughs> That's why I love giving other people opportunities. So, so they can experience the weightiness. So, so, so that they can, they can understand what it really means to handle this word of God. Paul was like, look, man, all I know is Christ and him crucified. Right? But, but, but Jesus, right? He, he came to, to validate this word of God, right? And he wanted to validate this Bible that we have. Don't let nobody discount it. He used the Old Testament in his preaching and his teaching. You read everything that, that Jesus said, we'll see. He, he referenced Adam and, and Eve and, and, and Abel and, and Noah and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and, 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 and David and, and, and Solomon, Elijah and Elisha and, 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 and Moses and, and, and Sodom and Gomorrah and even Jonah. And, and the point is, if he referenced these, if he believed these, then we have to believe these as well. Amen. So to teach that that part of the Bible is not a big issue, it's a very big issue. And Jesus says you will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. We need to be able to defend the word of God 
You need to have pa pa passages written down, memorized, like 2 Timothy 3 and 16 and 17 that says all scripture, yes, not some scripture, not New Testament scripture, but all scripture is God breathed. It is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness, right? So that the man of God, right, would, would be thoroughly equipped for every good work. 2 Peter 2 and 1 and 20 and 21 says, above all, right, you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things, right? It says, for prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And, 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 and Jesus says himself in John 15 and 10, he said, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's command and remain in his love, right? And so we are told directly from the God of man that, 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 that the word of God should not be taken lightly by, by the people of God. Amen? Amen? You know, it's interesting. I used to in a previous, uh, I don't want to say life because y'all think I believe in reincarnation. But in a previous time, I used to drive the bus for supper. <laughs> and and I, I was young and I was, I was very impatient and I had a very heavy foot, right? And, and, and I had this two-seater, you know, Top out, Batmobile, I used to drive all the time. I used to get out of my two-seater sports car and get into the bus. Problem was, I treated the bus like a two-seater sports car. And so I used to drive up and down Westchester Pike and go through Chester, just rolling, going around, get there. They'd be like, yo, that boy recognize. He has a 19-foot, you know, 20-ton, uh, 40-ton bus. He rolled around him, and I used to roll. And every once in a while, my brother could testify this. I would smack some. <laughs> Every once in a while, something would be in the way, and uh, I, I would try to move it. And they call me in, Mr. Anderson, you can't just move vehicles out your way with the bus. Uh, you, you done had a few of these, and we think you should move to the trolleys. <laughs> so, so they, they put me on the trolleys, and, and if, if you roll on a trolley, tro trolley roll on a truck, right? And so the destination is clear. There's no flexibility in, in the trolley, right? You, 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 you can't interpret which way you want to go. There's no shortcuts. There's no, you know, going around, maneuvering around. The tough stuff, the power comes from being on a track. And so you're straight. And all you can do is control the speed, how fast or how slow you go. But you can't go any other way. It's, it's like... It's, 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 it's like the Lord told Joshua, be, be careful to obey all the laws of my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go, Amen. right? And so it's something about understanding that the word of God is meant to keep us in alignment with the God of the world, right? And, 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 and if we could just stay in it. Right? If, if we could just learn it the right way, if we could just teach it the right way, God says we'll be on the track to, to, to this kingdom of heaven. Amen? And then he gets to verse 20, and he really starts to lay into it there. He says, for I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. Right? So, so, so he gives us the word as learners, then he challenges us as leaders, and now he's comparing us to the leaders of that day, right? The leaders of that day. This is a, a very, very powerful statement that Jesus just made about the scribes and the Pharisees, right? Now, we, we look at this word 2,000 plus years later, and we talk about the Pharisees like, man, they matter. That, that wasn't the case then. Understand, at, at, this, at this time, these were the most respected pillars of the faith, right? The scribes were highly 
trained in the knowledge of the scriptures and in the holiness of God, the Pharisees were fanatics about the ritualistic observations of the law of God. So for Jesus to challenge his followers, right, to have a righteousness that surpassed theirs, they had to be wondering, how is that even possible? Right? How, how is it? Like, these are the, the Jewish celebrities you're talking about, right? But understand that, that, that the righteousness that Jesus was referring to was not based on what the men saw, but what God saw, right? This is the difference between circumcision of the flesh and circumcision of the heart, right? Jesus was calling for the latter as a fulfillment of the law. See, it was not the letter of the law as in legalism that he was coming to fulfill. It was the spirit of the law, right, that reflected true righteousness. Amen? Amen. It, it's like coming to church Come on, out of obligation, right? And, and, and coming to church out of, obli out of obligation versus out of obedience, right? It, 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 it's, it's like this idea that, that I, I come uh, because it's expected, but I don't come with the spirit of expectancy. Amen? Amen. You, you know, Samuel was asking the question, what is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifices or, or your obedience to his voice? Right? And, and what about worship? Right? If the only reason that you stand or clap your hands or sing or stomp your feet or put your hand in the hands because somebody told you to, that's really not worship. That's called sermon size. <laughs> see, see, our worship should be joyful. It should be authentic. It should be a response to the pressure, the, the, the presence and the power and the awe of our God, right? That, that, that's why Jesus called these letters out, these leaders out in, in, in Matthew 23 says, Whoa! To you teachers of the law, woe to you, to you Pharisees, you, you hypocrites. You clean the, the outside of the cup and the dish, but, right, the inside, they, they are full of greed and, and self-indulgence. He said, you blind Pharisees, first clean the inside. Then the outside would also be clean. So, so the point is, being perceived as good is not good enough. Amen. You hear me? Good don't get you in. God does. Amen. That's why we, we, we say it's, it's not your, 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 about your, your good works outweighing your bad works. Because even our good works is like filthy rags. And, and no matter we like it or not, let, let me say this parenthetically. It, it's better to hear somebody say now that your behavior, your attitude is not like the Lord than to hear the Lord say later. Depart from me because I never leave. So what do we do with all of this, right? This is what I love. Jesus teaches us that at the end of the matter, in Matthew chapter 22, he says, the, the Matthew told him the story, he said the Pharisees got together and one of them, one of them, the expert in the law, he tested, he, he tested, tried to test Jesus, right? With this, teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. He said, this is the first and the greatest commandment, right? And the second is just like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. He said, all the law and the prophets, right, hang on these two commandments. That's why. I always say we can get a whole lot of stuff wrong, but we got to get those two things right. Amen? Amen. 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 Follow me. Amen. Thank you for your word, Lord. Forgive us for our ignorance and our arrogance, Lord. Sometimes when we don't understand and we don't know how to connect it, Lord God, uh, we just discount it or dismiss it. But Lord, we know that your Holy Spirit will illuminate. The Holy Spirit will give understanding. Lord, you tell us to just pray and ask for wisdom. You give it generously. Let us not be lazy Christians. 
Let us not live as biblical illiterates, glory God, in a world that so desperately need your word. Fill us, oh God, with your word. But Lord, pray that we won't just be hearers, but we'll also be doers. That we won't be just concerned with the outside of our cups, but we will make sure that the inside is clean first. Let us remember to continue to seek ye first, your kingdom, your righteousness, and trust everything else will be given unto us for your glory and your story. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Anderson for that word, that challenging word. Thank you. Amen. You know, God calls us to lean on him. Um, he's not the one who's lost, we are. People walk around talking about they found God. No, God found you. And found you before you were born, before you were formed in the womb. And so if you are here and you want to know this Jesus, this Jesus that's been calling you since before you were formed in the womb, this Jesus who has a purpose for you, this Jesus who is inviting you, I ask all the believers to just bow your heads and just pray. Just pray as, as Jesus calls to you. As Jesus invites you to become part of his family, part of his body, part of his church. As Jesus invites you, he's inviting you, he's calling you. He's calling out to you this Jesus that Pastor Anderson preached about. This Jesus that says to us, clean out the inside first. And I'm here to help you. I'm here with the spick and span. I'm here with the Holy Spirit to help you clean out your inside. To clean out your spirit, to clean out all of those things that other people don't know about, but God does. All of those things that, that he is calling out to you to, to help you to, to change. This Jesus that wants to come into your heart and, and to be with you and to move with you and to live with you and to help you to grow into who he would have you to be. Not who we would have you to be. If you want to know this Jesus, just slip up your hand. Just slip up your hand. Amen. I see that hand. I see that hand. And if you're online and if you want to know this Jesus, I would ask that you would just pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I know I am a sinner and I deserve the punishment for my sin. Jesus, I believe you paid the penalty for my sin and I ask for your forgiveness. Jesus, I will follow and confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I receive the free gift of salvation in you today. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want to welcome you to the family of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's the best decision we've ever made. He forgives us even when we walk away from him because he doesn't walk away from us. He forgives us no matter what. All we have to do is ask. And so um, if you prayed this prayer and you're online, you can text us at 267-991-8907. If you're in the congregation and you prayed this prayer, we would love to talk to you after the service. We welcome you into the family of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you all in the house and those online. Hope you were blessed. Thank you, Pastor Anderson, for that word. Go over the announcements really quick. So, GCC and guests, get ready for our annual church barbecue. That's going to be at Albuquerque Park on Sunday, September 5th at 10 a.m. As the word will go forth and fellowship, tickets are $10. 
$5 some for children and $25 for a household, those living with you. But GCC is a family, and so we invite our guests to be free. So if you have any guests that you would like to invite to our annual barbecue, we welcome you to see uh, either myself or Sister Gloria. She's raising her hand after church. Deadline is August 22nd as we prepare for this event. I want to continue to thank those that have been able to tithe as we continue to do the work of the Lord. Um, we have a tithe.ly app. If you'd like to tie that way, you can go onto our website. There's a drop-down box, or you can just mail in your ties if you're, if you're not coming to the building. Also, we continue with morning prayer. That's each and every Wednesday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. as we lift those prayers up, the body of Christ, um, keeping those in prayer, keeping those that are grieving, people that are in Ill, have any illnesses or any sicknesses or hospitalizations. Please, um, we lift those prayers up and you can give those um, to your deacon or deaconess, and please know that they'll be prayed for. We have a going to soon ministry that meets the first and third week of a Thursday of every month from 6.30 to 8. We have facilitators available in informal setting. Sister Margie is raising her hand. If you are going through anything, please see her and um, you can meet. Again, we hope you were blessed by today's service, and we just want to invite you, if you love God, or even if you don't know what it's like to love God, know that we love God here at Great Commission Church. The Word of God is going forth each and every Sunday, and we just welcome you. We're a family here, and we ask you to text guest, and it's at 267-991-8907. It's just that easy. We love you, and have a blessed week.